Hey folks, before I launch into my spiel, I just wanted to make a few acknowledgements. First of all, I'm hoping that you've all been digging Cloud Motsity. Is everyone out there having a good time? You can, you can say yes in the chat. This is a recording, so I can't hear you yelling. I'm certainly excited to be here and present for you. Anime conventions, gatherings, and meetings are sacred and exciting times. And it's been tough to put that part of our lives on hold while we grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic. I really miss seeing you guys, and I hope you're all doing okay. By now, you've no doubt taken in some tantalizing talks with industry luminaries, enjoyed a spotlight on all the anime's current and upcoming offerings. This one's my favorite. You, you want to get this one. And even gotten a taste of what's in store from the upcoming Uzumaki. I hope you'll enjoy what I've brought to the table. I want to thank all the anime and Cloud Matsudi for having me aboard. Andrew Partridge and his staff have moved mountains to bring the excitement of an anime convention home to you. And then they did it again, twice in one year. That's amazing. As we head into 2021, I'm sure that I'll get to see you all again soon. Until then, let's hang out and learn a few things about anime, dubbed in English. Hey, I'm Mike Toole. You may remember me from such places as Anime News Network, where I'm a columnist, Discotech Media, where I sometimes help produce anime home video releases, and Crunchyroll's holiday specials. I love anime dubbed in English, and it's not because I'm lazy and don't like reading subtitles. I like doing that part too. The fact is, anime has been exported around the globe from its beginnings as a mass media culture force in the 1960s. Right from the start, it was getting dubbed in English. There have been a variety of approaches. Some stuck to accuracy. The land you go to, Mother. Is it a nice place? Yes, it is. Others have taken some interesting liberties. But learning those things is so dangerous. Please take me with you. It's no place for women. <gasps> Besides, magicians don't like girls. They, they saw them in half. Put it all together, and you have a fascinating hidden history of Japanese animation's progress towards ascendancy in the West. For the past 18 years or so, geez, my friend and colleague Dave Merrill and I have been presenting a convention panel called Dubs That Time Forgot. Most anime dubs leak out to the public somehow. They're aired on television, or they're released on home video, or nowadays, they're streamed on the internet or uploaded to YouTube. But not all dubbed anime takes these paths. The global anime landscape is riddled with unsold pilot episodes, sales samples, forgotten film reels, decades lost home video releases, and obscure TV airings. This presentation exists to put the spotlight on some of these buried treasures, both because they're weird and entertaining, and because they're interesting and important pieces of anime history. Let's start digging. Oh, and if it's not blindingly obvious, this is a pre-recorded program. If you have questions or comments, you can hit me up in the chat or get me on Twitter at Michael Tool. Also, can, can you tell that I'm, I'm looking down? I keep having to look down because that's where my script is. That's real obvious, isn't it? Yeah, sorry guys, I'm not memorizing this. Galactic Pirates, aka The Enemies the Pirates, is the product of Chohei Kanbayashi, the award-winning science fiction author who also brought Japanese audiences Let Peace Be On Your Soul, Master of Words, and the world-famous Yukikaze. But Enemies the Pirates is a rollicking sci-fi comedy in the vein of Dirty Pair. Kanbayashi picked up a couple of Seiyun Awards, which is kind of the Japanese equivalent of the Hugo or Nebula for this series. These episodes are mostly from the third book in the series. The conceit is simple. A couple of hard luck detectives, Raul Latell and his partner Apollo, pursue space pirates. Only Apollo is a talking cat. And since he's a black cat... Dola, emergency start. But that's an order. If you don't start, I'm gonna lick your console. Yeah? <laughs> Get it? He's a black cat, so he talks like a black man. That's the last stroke. What a ripoff. Those damn pirates are trying to cheat me. I'll teach them. I'll show them, suckers. A black American man. <laughs> so I can't display my full ability. I might just piss on your circuit boards. Trash your ass. A jive-talking black American man from a 70s black exploitation movie. 
Yes, as long as you're fine. I don't need to take your orders anymore. I'm free. Well, reasonable. <laughs> well, <clears throat> excuse me. You really got a Class A computer, not simply a piece of junk? Uh, you know what? Forget it. It's thoroughly bent to stereotypes. Let's check out another clip. That was great. Full now. Oh, uh, yeah, I have a message from Chief. Apollo, I want to thank you very much. You tricked All-Star Brewing in Taranga Crater. You put one megaton of powdered alcohol in the water supply of the base. No, it wasn't. It was 10 megatons. Now the reservoir is filled with alcohol, and we get bills from All-Star Brewing. We paid your next six months' salary in advance to them. You're now working for nothing, Apollo. Thank you. What a drag. That doesn't make my day. All I wanted to do was swim in a lake of booze. Hey, send us over to Pirate Control. <laughs> Latell, Latell, damn. My field interceptor's still broke. Aw, oh, shit. Nazi! Huh? Pirate police business, follow that air car. What? Go, damn it! You got it. Galactic Pirates was released on home video in the UK during a time when manga video were dominant, almost monolithic. The style of the release, with imitation American accents and loads of dumb jokes and profanity, kind of fit into the UK market by accident. In fact, Galactic Pirates was dubbed directly at the behest of its master licensor, Kitty Films, in 1991. No doubt they figured that a flashy, high-toned action series would be an easy sell to international licensors if a dubbed version was already included. There were a sweet couple of years where you could find it in their international sales catalog, and they even debuted an episode of the dub at Anime Expo 1993. But there were not any apparent takers until Western Connection made the swoop in 1994. State your unit and the purpose. Repeat, state your unit and purpose. Titan Defense Command scrambled a fighter to intercept. We're in trouble. Dollar, force channel XHF open right away. Roger. Leviathan 4, can you hear us? You're following a pirate. Attack it. Who is this? What are you? Pirate control police. I'm assuming command. Attack the pirate. What are you saying? This is a private plane. No, it's not a private plane. It's a pirate. If you can't take it out, you'll have to give us attack coordinates and change your course. Change course and leave the area. Leave? Are you shitting me? You'll be killed. Just leave it to us. You're blocking our shot. Move it. You sound like the pirate. We're not pirates, we're detectives! Hey, fool, get out of the way! The fighter, the fighter has switched, switched to, to other, other channels. channels. Shit, what a blockhead! He's exactly like Chief. I'd say he's more like you, Apollo. Despite the flashy animation and pounding metal soundtrack, Galactic Pirates is not widely remembered at all. Because not enough people saw the damn thing. It's not a good dub, but its murky origins and peculiar style make it worth preserving. One last interesting bit of ephemera? Almost all the series' music is provided by a metal band called Air Pavilion, an unlikely trans-global supergroup anchored by guitarist and vocalist Takaki Yonemochi and featuring former Iron Maiden personnel Dennis Stratton and Paul Diano, as well as Saxon lead singer Biff Byford. The 80s metal sound kind of ties the whole thing together, but the halting dub doesn't quite make it whole. Despite all that, an artifact like Galactic Pirates is emblemic of why I research and preserve dubbed anime like this. Almost nobody remembers it, so we must remember it. Our enemies, our enemies, our pirates. Our pirates. K.O. Beast Century might be passingly familiar to the longtime anime fan, thanks to a snappy DVD release from Right Stuff International many years back. That one was dubbed in New York. This one? Well, maybe the accents will clue you in. Come back and fight like a man! How long are you gonna keep me in this dump? Let me out! <laughs> Give it up, kiddo. Who's that? It's useless to talk to robots. You got that, buddy? What did you say? Hey, cool it. Don't get angry with me. We're both stuck in the same boat. Maybe we should be on the same side. My name is Badmint. 
Although some have been known to call me the Poet of Sorrow. <sighs> Are you saying you don't believe me? That's a totem jewel. Then you must be the son of the great tribes as well. <laughs> you got it. This is the totem jewel used by my bird tribe. But oh, woeful day, my totem was carried away by the humans. That happened to our tribe's totem too. Yeah, this older dub of K.O. Beast was done in the UK. It's rough work, but I think it's notable because most anime dubbed in English, regardless of where it's produced, tries to go for a neutral mid-Atlantic American manner, no doubt influenced by how most Hollywood actors have talked for the last 80 years. That's because of America's outsized footprint and influence over global entertainment. Even people in English-speaking places far outside the United States are kind of accustomed to stuff in English sounding American, if that makes any sense. I'm hungry. Uh... Bard, what's that you're eating? Can't you see? It's a bean, you idiot. We bird warriors always carry an emergency food supply with us. Whoa, bad vibes. Hey, what's got into him? When one gets hungry, he loses all control. What? Give it to me! Ew. Finger licking good. Get off! Yeah. Oh. When I get goosebumps, I turn into a bird. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, shoot! What, 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 what? When Wang sneezes, he turns into a tiger. Hmm. Oh, delicious. Mmm. K.O. Beast doesn't play it like that. This dubbed version was directed by noted scholar, author, linguist, and culture critic Dr. Jonathan Clements approximately 8 million years ago. In 1993, actually. The video was published by Anime UK, the upstart anime magazine published by veteran critic, cosplayer, and conventioneer Helen McCarthy. Oh, there's Helen now! Hi there! I'm, I'm <laughs> I love that lady. This sounds kind of like a fan dub done by people who were pretty new to the ADR process. That makes sense, they were new to it. Interestingly, since then, Dr. Clements has not only published a ton of books, he's hosted numerous TV documentaries about the Far East, including the recent Root Awakening. Helen McCarthy has published standard-setting biographies and analyses of famous anime figures like Osamu Tezuka and Leiji Matsumoto. Together, the two of them collaborated on the anime encyclopedia, which is exactly as enormous and useful as it sounds. But in the early 90s, the dream of British anime fans finding their feet as professionals was all tied up in furry anime. <laughs> Master, what's happening? There's something huge on the bioscope. I know. Yeah, yeah! Yeah! Here's me done! But I'm not going to look down on a dub like this, because it's unique, both for its crew of anime fandom notables and for its ardently British stylings. Time may have forgotten K.O. Beast, but I won't. <sighs> I spoke a little earlier about manga video's presence in the 90s UK anime market. They dominated almost absolutely, and that was for a couple of reasons. First of all, since they were backed by Island Records, they had way more money and resources than anyone else. In fact, Manga Video directly co-produced the 1995 Ghost in the Shell movie, 
pumping a million dollars of their own money into the production. Beyond that, they focused on the fact that the anime was cool, and stylish, violent, and sexy anime was the coolest. Not only did the video label release fare like Bubblegum Crisis and Project Aiko and Fist of the North Star, darlings of the OVA and film market, they specifically pushed the envelope with their English language releases. In the UK, all film and video releases require a BBFC certification. The British Board of Film Classification is a little like the MPAA in the US, the gang that decides which movies are rated R versus PG-13. Only it's an actual government agency rather than a self-regulating entertainment concern. Every video that comes out in Britain requires a BBFC certification. Has to have it. Most anime presented in a straightforward manner would probably fall into the spectrum somewhere between you, suitable for everyone, and 15, suitable for teens and older. There's violence, there's nudity, maybe there's a little profanity. Many of manga videos dubs had more profanity than required, and there's a reason for that. I'll hit on it in a minute. And here's a weather update. Later on today, Santa Carrera will be fun. Ah, shit. Good morning, Joe. Morning, Rosa. What's today's schedule? You have a meeting with your assistant, Lloyd, at 9 a.m., and an interview with a Japanese TV station at 10 a.m. Oh, my God. If you complete the fiber optical computer project on schedule, you will most likely receive the Nobel <laughs> Prize, Joe. Good joke for a computer. Where'd you get that from? Ah. <sighs> That's the eighth time today. What is? Sign, Joe, and I'm sure you don't realize you're doing it. I bet something is bugging you this morning. Yeah, I know yeah. you're on the cover of Time magazine and you got everything going for you. What's the problem? Oh, it's the Japanese version. Once this issue comes out over here, you'll be known as one of the great geniuses that this world has produced. You're not as snotty as everyone thinks. Maybe so, Lloyd, but that can only be a seven-day wonder. What is more important to me is the respect of my family and friends, and that includes you. Ah, bullshit, says you. It's easy for somebody like you to say that, Joe. Big words from a genius who made a million bucks in the year he came to Silicon Valley. Isn't that right? Makyu Senjo, released under the title Dark Warrior in North America, kind of fit the bill. It was a really typical trashy 90s action OVA about a Silicon Valley genius whose dark, primal power is unleashed, and that makes him do this. Want some more, Joe? Yes, I'm not gonna lose. It's obvious who's going to win, Joe. I'll finish this on the next attack, that's for sure. If you don't resist, you won't suffer. I can't win. Everything Lloyd says is true. Or is it? Is it just bullshit? They say that life is just one big battle against the odds. If my life depends on it, I'll have to give it all I've got or die in the attempt. <laughs> Annie, Rudy. Joe of the past, help me. Give me strength to finish this monster off. you. Lloyd. Joe! Please don't pull it out or I will die. <gasps> Lloyd. You are a man now, Joe. Lloyd, I'm sorry. If you continue with the fight, I'm sure you will defeat all the rest 
It's up to you now, my brother. Hey, Lloyd, come back! Lloyd! <laughs> Lloyd! Sorry, I just wanted to make you watch a guy have his head caved in by a fist, but then keep talking like nothing happened. The violence, uh, the swearing, th these are all done in the service of getting the correct BBFC certification, which was 18. See, the violence and the boobies weren't always enough to push it over the line, uh, but if you load it up with swear words, that'll just about do the job. But, if you were paying attention, you'll notice that Maku Senjo is only rated 15. It has the violence, it has the sex stuff, but not enough swears, I guess. Maybe that's why it wasn't a hit. Anyway. The imposing 18 rating on some titles would then signal to the label's mostly teenage lad audience that these videos were sophisticated entertainment for grown-ups, and then they'd line up to rent and buy them. That's how it works in a lot of entertainment. You get them while they're young, and they'll never be able to quit. I mean, look, look, look at me. I'm 44 years old, and I still watch anime. Incidentally, Makyu Senjo is Japanese for Dark Warrior. Here's a natural. Why wouldn't you release an anime adaptation of Street Fighter 2, one of the most popular video games ever? In fact, there was an English dub of Street Fighter 2 V in the US, by animes, the talented professionals who dubbed stuff like Macross Plus and Giant Robo and Cowboy Bebop. Exactly the same, just like when we were kids. Hey, kid! Oh. There's only one thing missing from here a good challenge. Are you ready for a round, my friend? I am! But those dubs made it back to the UK market. So why did Street Fighter 2V get a totally different dub? This place really brings back some memories. Hey, Ken! Oh. oh! It has been a long time, Rue, hasn't it? Let's see if you're as good as you used to be. All right. Looks like you haven't been neglecting your training, have you? Neither of you. Because of ADV films, that's why. Having achieved significant commercial success in the U.S., ADV made a bold move for the UK market. Along with publishing some of their own shows initially done for the US market, like Evangelion and Queen Emeraldus, ADV Films UK picked up shows where the other companies had done the US release, like Takagami Guardian of Darkness. There was an existing dub of Takagami, so no need to do another. But in Street Fighter 2V's case, Animaze's dub was in progress when ADV licensed the series. It wasn't finished yet, so they had to make their own. And so, here's a rare case of a Texas-based American company producing an English version specifically for the UK market. What the? Oh. Hey, you punks. Did you do this to my men? Hey, Ken, sounds like this one's got a backbone. Looks like he's the main dish for the evening. I'll handle him. Another avian, please. Huh. Oh. Ah. Pathetic. Does your mama know you're here and not in school? Sure. Would you like to see what I've learned? <laughs> ah! What's the 
the matter, boy? Is that the best you got? <laughs> Looks like you didn't learn as much as you thought you did, did you? All right, let me teach you a few new lessons. Your mama's calling you. Go home! Oh, yeah! Street Fighter 2V never escaped the UK. It never made it to DVD, even. The actors remember it fondly, and will mention it in their convention appearances, even to American audiences who never got to see it. But I've hung on to most of the episodes that were dubbed for the UK, and if one of the publishers I work with ever happens to bring Street Fighter 2V back to home video, I'll be hoping to sneak the UK dub in there with the US one. In fact, we've done that move before. Little known fact about dubs. By contract, most of them belong to the studio that produces and releases them. At first. So, when Fartimations releases Boo Boo Rubber Panic on video, the dub belongs to them. If it happens to be licensed overseas in the near term, they have to be involved. They get a piece of the action. However, after the show breaks even on its production cost, sometimes called meeting the minimums or earning out, the rights to the dub often revert to the licensor, so they can package it with a license to the show down the road after the original license has expired. This is actually a win-win. Uh, producing the dub usually helps drive sales for the licensee, and it adds value down the road for the licensor. It's why you regularly see license rescues that include the original dubs. Sometimes, there are multiple original dubs. Oh boy. It seems the time has come to say goodbye. Sayonara. Well, for a new partner, your timing's good. Thanks for my life. I'm told you're a brilliant fighter, but the facts speak a little differently. Pity. Can't say you haven't got an opinion. My name is Taki uh, Renzoburo, 28 years old. Height, six feet, one and a half inches. Weight, 176, blood type AB. Official cover, electrical equipment salesman. Salary, 2,400 a month. No wife, no children. Very impressive. Not bad. How about some of your measurements, or is that prying? Makie. No family name. My cover in this world is fashion modeling. But because I have no sponsor, the other models refuse to work with me, and so I've remained somewhat obscure. Obscure, huh? Maybe there's some other reason they love to hate you. Could it be that you're obnoxiously perfect? Thanks. I suppose I should be flattered. Let's go pick up Mr. Meyer, shall we, since he's probably arrived by now. There you go, being perfect again. It really is disgusting. But I can't say I'm not glad to meet you. <laughs> You're very cute. But not for this world, I'm sorry to say. The party's over, guys. It's time to go. Nice meeting you. There's no need for me to ask who you are. Thanks for the help. I heard you were the best, but it would appear that I was mistaken. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Renzaburo Re Taki, age 25, height 180 centimeters, weight 65 kilos, blood type AB, officially a salesman for a medium-sized electrical goods manufacturer, salary 230,000 yen per month, unmarried, no children. That's very good. And how about you? I'd love to hear all your vital statistics. Mackie, that's my only name. No relatives, no husband, no children. 
Officially a fashion model, but small time. Some say it's because I have an attitude, but I don't get a lot of work. It's their loss, then. You are really something special. Disgustingly perfect, I'd say. Thank you for that kind remark. But we can't stand here chatting all night. Our charge will be arriving by now. You're also disgustingly loyal to your duties, but I reckon it's going to be a pleasure working with you. There are multiple original dubs for Wicked City, a feature film from Yoshiaki Kawajiri and Madhouse that Discotech Media rescued for DVD and Blu-ray in recent years. Wicked City's got an interesting history in English. It was originally picked up by Streamline Pictures in North America thanks to its violence and sex appeal. But over in the UK, it was instead licensed by Manga Video, also for its violence and sex appeal. Both publishers made their own dubs for their own markets. When Discotech got the rights, a simple question was posed to the licensor. Hey, there are two English dubs. Can we include both? They don't always say yes to that question. But this time they did. The streamlined version was included with the materials from the Japanese licensor, but the UK dub had to be rescued from an earlier home video release. Let's revel in the differences. As promised, the manga video dub has more swearing. How much swearing, you ask? What the fuck was that about? I thought we had some time left before the peace treaty lapsed. At least I hope so. Mm. Uh, fucking monsters! Yeah! I'm sure you're aware of what happens to those men who risk an association with them. The suck dry of the seed and their vigor is permanently depleted. They become empty husks, never again able to fuck. They're after us. They're getting ready to send up a negative space field. Great. That's all we fucking need. Die, fucker! Dr. Mayart? Be more watchful. The enemy's right behind you. Huh? <laughs> oh, 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 that pleases me. An enemy creature said specially for me. You sure know how to flatter an old man. You two should hurry. Get going. Go where? I don't understand. To conclude the peace treaty, of course. What else do you think I'm talking about? But that's for you to do. I... No, it isn't. It's your duty. What do you mean, old man? You haven't caught on yet, have you? It wasn't you that was protecting me from any harm. It was little old me that was protecting you two from our enemies on the other side. What's this all about? Was it you who brought us here and gave us psychic treatment? Listen carefully. In recent millennia, a form of communication, call it a mutual understanding, had begun to develop between our world and the dark world. But we need a children born of parents of both worlds so the process of welding both sides together could begin. As you know, it is normally impossible. But in a few rare cases, we managed to produce some who carry the gene capable of producing children of mixed blood. I kind of love manga video dubs of this era. Both the silly profanity and the poorly concealed English and Welsh accents are oddly comforting, relics of a successful but bygone era. To me, having the UK version included is a triumph because it is the successful and complete rescue of a dub that time forgot. 
all of this old stuff is worth saving. And in most cases, if the will is there, we can save it. We're heading into the home stretch, so I'll put the spotlight on another UK dub that never left the British Isles. Oh, hey, morning, how are you doing, everyone? Ran? It's nice to see you. We haven't seen you for ages. You really should take it easy, Ran. Uh, thanks. I'll try. Hi, Sonnet. May I introduce you to my friend? Go on, go and talk to her. Go on. Ah. ah, how do you do? It's nice to meet you, Miss Miss. I'm Sonnet Badgie. Oh, welcome, Sonnet. My name is Ran Komatsuzaki. I hope you'll <laughs> hang with us. <laughs> oh, so you're Ran. <gasps> I've heard so much about you. Nehru, <laughs> why didn't she? <laughs> She's amazing. She can speak French, German, Russian, Chinese, and Japanese. She's brilliant. That is really amazing. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you too, Ran. <gasps> what? What is this? On a northern mountain, in a place named Nanigashira Temple, lives a man of wise actions. Last summer, he was able to foresee what is happening in the world today. She's pretty good. Wow, she's perfect. She's too good even for Ran. She plays just like a machine and her accuracy is quite uncanny. This clip, the first meeting between two rivals, is from a series called Blue Sonnet. You see, her name is Sonnet, and she has blue hair. Get it? The show practically writes itself. Sonnet may have special talents, but her new friend and rival, Ron, has some skills of her own. Is she here? Are you okay? Uh, 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 Is he your uh, friend? Wataru! What's wrong? Are you alright, Wataru? He's losing a lot of blood from that wound. We'd better get him to hospital quickly. Wataru! All of the dubs I've shown you in this program are ones that, until recently in Wicked City's case, never really escaped from the UK. And Blue Sonnet is not an exception. This is a genuinely enjoyable OVA from 1990, part of a wave of sci-fi adventures featuring characters with extrasensory powers, including films like Lock the Superman, Open the Door, and Cosmo Police Justy. What sets Blue Sonnet apart is two things. First of all, it's actually based on shoujo manga. Its original comic version ran in the girls' magazine Hanato Yume. We think of shoujo manga as romance, comedy, or magical girl adventures. Maybe eerie horror. Blue Sonnet is at odds with all of that stuff. Just watch how the title character solves problems. Yeah! Now's the time to do it, Sonnet! Do it! 
Let's burn rubber to Hakazaki. I mentioned earlier that Manga UK had invested a bunch of money in Ghost in the Shell. Today we recognize that movie as a landmark film and a true classic, but it actually didn't make its money back right away, and Manga found themselves overextended. Blue Sonnet's dub was part of the first wave of later productions that were moved from the company's dubbing studio in London to Cardiff. I still find the performances charming, but there's a perceptible quality gap. The Blue Sonnet OVA itself is one of those special late 80s, early 90s affairs. It crackles with energy and is generally really enjoyable to watch. It did rate a release in North America, but only on subtitled VHS. Plans for a DVD release fizzled when the licensor abruptly declined to renew. And that's the last we saw of Blue Sonnet. I sometimes talk grandly of the need to rescue old dubs like this, true dubs that time forgot, but sometimes they can't be rescued, at least not officially. To wrap it up, here's one of the most out there edge cases. So, she's my distant relative. Everyone should be really friendly to her. You have such powerful legs. Are you two really related? If you have any problems, just ask me. <laughs> Yes. Well, I'm glad she's popular and all, because that proves the outstanding quality of my technology. But... What things do you like? Fish, I guess. What's your hobby? Sunbathing, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Why does Nuku Nuku have to introduce herself again during my class? I don't mind it so much. But they never listen to me! Don't you mess with me. Now sit down! I spoke earlier about how fans gone pro had produced the dub of K.O. Beast. Something similar happened in the same era and on the same island. This time it was the upstart Crusader Video, who in 1994 published three episodes of something they called Catgirl, Nuku Nuku. Obviously, Catgirl Nuku Nuku is the OVA series all-purpose cultural Catgirl Nuku Nuku. I don't think shortening the title a little was a bad idea, but what I really like about Crusader's version is the breadth of the accents. Most dubs will sport a few stereotypical accents. Brooklyn accents, Valley Girl accents, Cockney accents. But the characters in the Crusader version of Nuku Nuku span the spectrum of British accents. Does it hurt? It's okay. It's only a small scratch. You do remember your promise, don't you? If Ryan was to be harmed under your care. You agreed to return Ryan to his mother, so you should. Ooh. Is that true? Uh, well, there's a bit of confusion between me and her. Uh, right, right then, let's then, go. go. Let me go! Oh, let me go! Let me go! Let me go. Hurt 
but trying to save me. How can I take him away for that? Not just London, but also Southern and Northern accents. And these accents are not ascribed for really strict specific reasons, but because the producer, the late James O'Shea, simply felt that there ought to be a truly British dub. One that wasn't just working actors in Cardiff suppressing their natural accents. So he did it. He also helped produce this bitchin' theme song. I'm glad to hear that Nuku Nuku is doing well. As time passed, this dub of Catgirl Nuku Nuku drifted away. It wasn't widely aired on TV or even reprinted after its initial VHS release. The tapes disappeared, except for the one I bought on eBay in 2005. I had a secret weapon in my arsenal, a PAL to NTSC VHS player and a DVD recorder. I made the digital transfer and shared the recording with a few friends. That was all it took to make the save. 13 years later, Discotech included that rare version on their release of the entire Catgirl Nuku Nuku series. It wasn't strictly easy. First of all, the licensor had to find and check their old contract with Crusader to make sure that they had ownership of it, and Discotech's production team had to painstakingly resync the ripped VHS audio track to the original master footage, not to mention recreating the entire original opening and ending sequences with titles matched to the correct fonts. Yeah, Discotex guys are crazy. But the point is, Catgirl Nuku Nuku was saved, and it was worth it. When I started saving and sharing dubs that time forgot, I focused on the really old stuff. Like things that got shown in movie theaters, but never on television. Or stuff that was aired on television, but never got released on video. Almost 20 years later, we find ourselves in an era where dubs from the DVD and digital era are slowly being forgotten. Stuff like Nelvana's Card Captor stub, Moncoli Nights, and the original ADV film's Evangelion dub, just to name a few. These aren't easy to get on home video. Maybe they were never easy to get on home video to begin with. These are not totally vanished. They can be rescued. But right now they're hovering just out of reach of a commercial rescue, and you never know when the old torrents and YouTube uploads will disappear. So as you rack up viewings of your favorite anime from back in the day on streaming portals, and stack up the DVDs and Blu-rays in your library, you keep your eyes peeled. That old YouTube rip or long out-of-print DVD just might be a dub that time forgot.